Hey there, my name is Jeremy Fontenot, and I want to welcome you to this episode of Revival Missions. I want to talk to you today about the subject of speaking in tongues. In fact, I want to, I want to entitle it, How to Supercharge Your Spiritual Life Through Tongues. Now, Jesus, let me, let me read something to you from Mark chapter 16. Jesus spoke to his disciples, and he says this, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. So you've got to ask yourself, are, are these signs following you as a believer. He says, in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And Now, that doesn't mean that you go out and grab a snake and uh, play with it and, uh, like they do in some churches. There's some crazy churches out there, but um, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Now, obviously, I really wanted to highlight the fact that he says they will speak with new tongues. They will speak with new tongues. Now, the Apostle Paul he made a statement, and it, it sounds as though he's, he's boasting here, but he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, which is a golden chapter that really elaborates on the subject of speaking in tongues, which is a, a heavenly prayer language, but he says, I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than you all. Now, Paul is not boasting just to boast here. He is saying that to encourage the church to pray in their heavenly language, to speak in tongues. Now, I realize that this may be an unpopular message today. I know that many churches, they take surveys of what the people want, what they believe from the Bible, and then you know, they go according to that survey. Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm going to preach the word as it's laid out, whether it's, it's popular or not. You know, there's a lot of churches that are trying to be uh, sensitive, and, and, and I, I guess I understand what you're trying to do there, but we've got to stick with the gospel. We've got to stick with the scriptures. Uh, are, do you know better than God? pastor who is left behind this doctrine of tongues and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The way the, the church was born was by the Holy Spirit being poured out upon those 120 in the upper room. They were all baptized in the Holy Spirit so that they would not be ill-equipped to walk in authority, to walk in power, and to destroy the works of darkness. Every believer can be equipped with the baptism of the Holy Spirit that you would be filled to the full with God and pray in this heavenly language. And then you begin to see the, the gifts, all the other gifts begin to operate in your life. God doesn't want us to be ill-equipped. So if we don't see the gifts in operation within our own life, you've got the, the revelation gifts, you've got the speaking gifts, you've got the power gifts, you know, you've, got, you've got prophecy, you've got words of knowledge, you've got the working of miracles, you've got the, the gift of tongues, public speaking of tongues. You've got the interpretation of those tongues. The, these gifts, they come about whenever we begin to, to speak in tongues. It is a gateway for the supernatural in our life. And that way, we're not ill-equipped. We can handle the things that come our way. As a matter of fact, we go on the offense. 
as believers and we begin to destroy the works of darkness. And so Paul, he makes this statement, I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than you all. And it was his hope, as a matter of fact, he says in verse 5 of 1 Corinthians 14, I wish you all spoke with tongues. And so I can almost see Paul going, come on, get with the program. But many people, they, they've left behind these gifts of the Holy Spirit. Why would you do that? They're gifts from the Holy Spirit for the church to walk in victory. This is how we walk in the abundant life that Jesus promised. And so you can supercharge your spiritual life through tongues. Now, I want to share with you the purposes of speaking in tongues. Number one, speaking in tongues is a supernatural means of direct communication with God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it says in verse 2, for he who speaks, he or, or she who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. So when you are speaking in tongues, you are actually praying. This is why Paul says, and I'm going to kind of bounce around here in the scriptures, but I, I would encourage you to get your Bible out and look. Sometimes people will say, you know, I, I don't believe in, in tongues. And I'm thinking to myself, do you believe the Bible? If you believe the Bible, then you should believe in speaking in tongues because it, it's there. If it's there, it's, it's available for you and I. It's not a matter of you believing if tongues are, are for today or not. And many of them, they, they base, they base that, that belief upon one scripture. Matter of fact, I'll just read that for you now. In, in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8 reads, Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. Verse 10 says, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. They claim that the Bible is that which is perfect that has come. Now, the Bible is perfect. God's word is perfect. But they claim that now that we have the Bible, that which is perfect is here, and so it, it, it does away with tongues. But if, if you read this in its context, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. I have to ask you, has prophecies ceased? Has, has knowledge ceased? Well, then why do you believe that tongues has ceased? God's word is perfect, but what it's referring to here is heaven. Heaven is perfect. And when heaven has come, there won't be any need for prophecies. There won't be any more need for, for tongues and, and for for knowledge. There won't be need for those things. And so that, that's to hang an entire doctrine that healing, signs and wonders, tongues has, has ended with the time of the apostles because we now have the Bible. Hanging that doctrine on this scripture is flimsy. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a flimsy uh, foundation the base to base that whole belief system upon and so you know back in 1906 we saw a mighty revival that took place and um, we saw this treasure now there were many people b before that that did speak in tongues of course we have the early church that that prayed in in tongues they spoke in tongues but 
religion and tradition began to, to hide this uh, speaking in tongues and many of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we have seen in operation. It's, it's as though over the last hundred years, God has, or a little over a hundred years, God has ushered in many of these gifts that were, were lost through religion and tradition. And so over the last hundred and uh, 20 years, we have seen God uh, just bring back a, a renewal of signs and, and wonders and, and gifts of the Spirit. It's been, it's been beautiful. And so back in, in 1906, there was the Azusa Street Revival, which so many of the denominations that we see today, the Assemblies of God, the, the Four Square Church, a lot of those, they came out of that revival, which during that revival, speaking in tongues, it, it, it's like it just came back in a, in a powerful uh, force. God was breathing again, bringing that back into uh, the church. And many of those Christians back you know, in, in, a, in 1906 and the years thereafter, they paid a dear price. I mean, if you spoke in tongues, people looked at you as though you were crazy. And, uh, you know, they would, they would persecute you. You would get fired. They would throw food at you and just mock you and ridicule you. You were ostracized from society. But then after that, you know, over time, over a few decades, it began to normalize. And there's been this big movement. There's been a big movement where it's been accepted as mainstream Christianity. But then... Over the past few decades, as, as people have, have really begun to take the focus off of God and, and off the spiritual gifts, and they begin to focus on the, the needs of the people and how to reach them, it's as though they try to do it in man's way without the power of God. And these, these gifts, these signs and wonders, even the, the Bible says in verse 22 of 1 Corinthians 14 that tongues are for a sign. Acts chapter 2, it's how the birth of the church started through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. Praise God. Praise God. So you need tongues. You need to speak in tongues as a believer. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. So number one, speaking in tongues is a supernatural means of direct communication with God. We saw that for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Number two, speaking in tongues causes us to speak mysteries, divine secrets. And it says here at the end of verse two, however, in the spirit, the one who's speaking in tongues, he speaks mysteries. And so, you know, Paul later says that whenever you speak, he, when you speak in tongues, that your mind is, your, or your understanding is unfruitful. But you are speaking the mysteries of God. And I believe that the reason why Paul was making such a boast that he spoke in tongues more than all of them was because it brought about the revelation that Paul walked in, the revelation that he wrote down for us. He wrote more than two-thirds of the New Testament. And the things that he brought out for us, you know, the, the new man. Um, our lives are hidden in Christ. No longer, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. I mean, just these amazing revelations that he talked about. He wrote the book on tongues. He wrote the book on the gifts of the so many of the Holy Spirit, so many of the doctrines, even the fivefold ministry gifts. Paul wrote on the subject of, of family. He talked about our spiritual armor. Paul walked in such incredible revelation, and I believe it was due to the fact that he spoke in tongues. 
And so whenever we speak in tongues, we are praying, and we are praying mysteries, divine secrets, and hidden wisdom to God. Because when we pray in tongues, it is the Holy Spirit praying through us. It's as though we are bypassing our minds and allowing our Holy Spirit, who is one with the Holy Spirit, to pray. And so whenever we, we do that, we are praying the perfect will of God. Paul talked about how very often, you know, there are, there are times that we don't know what to pray for as we ought to. And it's not that we don't know how to pray. We, we, we know how to pray. It's just there are times when we don't know the specific need uh, in a situation of what someone's dealing with. And so when we pray, we are praying through the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit is praying through us. And he's making intercession with what the Bible calls groanings, which cannot be uttered. In other words, we cannot articulate the need um, in, 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 we can't articulate it, it with human words. And so the Holy Spirit will, will intercede through us with these groanings, with praying or speaking in tongues. And when he's praying, he is praying according to the will of God. So when you face a, a problem that you don't understand, Begin to pray in a language that you don't understand. Begin to speak and pray in tongues. And the Holy Spirit intercedes through you to pray according to God's perfect will. Man, that's so good. And what it does is it releases the counsels of God. Praying in tongues is the believer's hotline to heaven. Praise God. Now, number three, speaking in tongues is a God-given way to edify ourselves. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 4, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Now, praying in the Holy Spirit is a supernatural means to building up our spirit man, to build it up, to make it strong. To edify means to build up. It means to strengthen. It means to restore or replenish with spiritual power. And so praying in tongues, it, it builds up our inner man. Let me read to you from uh, Jude, the book of Jude. I want you to notice how he says something here. Jude in verse 20. He says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit. You know, th there's a difference between a, a casual prayer and praying in the Holy Spirit. There are times when I'll you know, sit down with my family, we'll enjoy a meal together, but we'll pray beforehand, and, and very often I'm, I'm thinking about the food, and so it's kind of a quick, casual prayer. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for family. Thank you for my food. We ask that you bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. That's not a very spiritual prayer. It is, it is spiritual, but not, not in the sense of, of whenever you pray in the Holy Spirit and you strike oil. And what I mean by that is you're praying, you're praying by the power of the Holy Spirit. So praying in the Holy Spirit will build up your faith. It builds up your inner man on the inside where you are energized by the very life of God. 
I'm telling you, if you will pray in tongues and read the word of God, you will not backslide. You will only progress further, farther, deeper than you've ever gone in your relationship with God. As a matter of fact, when you pray in tongues, it stirs up a fire on the inside of you. Do you know that it is your responsibility to keep the fire in your heart burning for Jesus? You know, if you start a fire in, in the natural, you put logs and you, you build a fire and you, you set it ablaze, that fire will burn as long as there is fuel there. But once it burns all that fuel, if you don't add another log onto the fire, it will burn out. Paul made a very interesting statement to Timothy. He said to stir up the gift that's on the inside of you. That word, you think about that word to stir. I look at it as, as fanning into flame the gift, the gifts that are on the inside. We were given the gift of the Holy Spirit, and it's up to us to stir up that gift. How do we stir up that gift? We stir it up by praying in the Holy Ghost. We pray in tongues, and it, it, it burns. The fire of God will burn in your heart, and you will not backslide. Praise God. When we speak in tongues, we have the God-given ability to interpret what we have spoken in the Spirit. We can pray to interpret in English what we have spoken in tongues, and that's true. John G. Lake, if, if you ever get the chance, you can read his stuff online, his messages online. He lived a uh, hundred years ago or so, and he went to Africa, and he would go out and, and, and walk. And on his walks, he would pray in tongues. And whenever he would get back, he would ask the Lord for the interpretation. And what he would write out would be his message for that day or the next day that he was to minister on. And so he would get his, his messages through praying in tongues and then getting the interpretation. How cool is that? So you, you can pray in tongues and you can ask God for the interpretation Pray in tongues over a situation in your life. Maybe it's over a relationship or, or over a decision to take a job or not. Begin to pray in your heavenly language and then ask God for His mind and the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. So speaking in tongues energizes and activates our human spirit with the life of God. I'll end with this one. But in John 7 and verse 38, let, let me just read that to you. Jesus, he spoke this. He said, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Of course, he's been glorified now. And so we can, we can become energized by allowing this river of living water to flow in and through us through praying in the Holy Spirit. I tell you, if you will diligently dig and study God's Word, and pray in the Holy Spirit, you're going to find the anointing on you never leaves and never wanes. You can walk in this constantly, every day of your life. Choose today to let the river of life flow through you. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. For more teachings, please go to jeremyfontenot.com. That's where you'll find our media ministry, Revival Missions. We are a ministry that prioritizes in winning souls and provide biblical teaching in healing, faith, financial prosperity, and living free from sin and living in victory. 
If you would like to be more than just a casual listener, but would like to financially partner with us to see the kingdom of God advance, please go to Jeremy Fontenot forward slash give for a quick and easy way to give. Thanks for watching. God bless.